We've all seen those crazy 3D websites floating around the web that look like black magic. As they've got this crazy 3D elements that move around and do different things as you scroll through the page or interact with different elements. Well, despite how complex these websites look, they're the powerful no-code tools that we have today anyone can build them without writing a single line of code or spending weeks learning 3D software. Well, in this video, I'll share with you exactly how you can build these 3D websites without any previous 3D design experience or any complex web design knowledge. We will be using a set of no-go tools that anybody can use despite their technical experience. And we will be going over two different ways of doing this so that you can choose the one that suits you best. And without any further ado, let's jump right into it. So the tools we'll be using in this video is Webflow and Spline, and then I'll show you how to use Dora and Spline. So starting off the Spline, what is Spline? Spline is a web-based 3D design tool. It allows you to create different 3D objects as well as different 3D scenes all on the web. The very simple interface, so you don't have to learn complicated tools like Blender and After Effects. The Spline, it's super easy and anyone can do it without any previous technical experience. So we're gonna start off our project by going through some of the community projects and getting something from there. I'd like to do a car project, so I'm gonna search up for cars. I'm gonna try to find one that I like. Maybe I'll search up for car instead i like this one here aston martin animation so we're gonna click on this one you can see the preview here i like it so i'm gonna click remix here so that i can use it in my project awesome now it's loaded this is the car that we'll be working with we've got the camera here so this is what it's actually gonna look like once it's rendered it will be from the camera pretty cool animation i can actually edit the car itself by clicking here and then going for all of these different options i can change the material i can change the colors but we're not gonna do that this is not a part of this tutorial i'm gonna adjust the camera slightly i'm i want it to be a little bit closer to the car so i'm gonna adjust it over here i'm also gonna increase the fov because i wanted to be kind of this effect and we're gonna get a bit closer again maybe a little bit further yeah i like that and then maybe adjust the rotation a little bit just to give this a little artistic look yeah i like that a lot but when i click preview after adjusting the camera this is what it's gonna look like pretty cool so to actually use this in our project i'll click on the button here on export and this is where all the magic happens in the play settings you can adjust everything we're actually going to be exporting using the viewer this will allow us to import the spline project into webflow or dora and actually have it like interactive moving and stuff like that we're going to change the mouse events here to global and then in the play settings we can adjust all of the different settings to our liking i'm gonna have the page scroll i'm gonna have the cursor orbit we're not gonna have pan we're not gonna have zoom we are gonna have soft orbit and then here we can actually adjust all of the settings so i'm gonna adjust the orbit settings so you can't orbit too much actually yeah, i will have pan as well and in the pan settings i'm also gonna limit it by quite a lot so you can't scroll too much and that should be okay sometimes you have to play around with the settings to get it how you want but after you've done the settings you click here on update viewer and then wait a second for that to load now, when building websites with Webflow, one hack is to use pre-built component libraries like Reloom or Flowbase, as both of these can save you a lot of time and help you build a beautiful website without having to build it from scratch. So before we jump into the website building itself, let me show you these two tools as they can come in very, very handy. But if you know about these two tools already, you can skip to the following timestamp to get to the actual website building. So this is Flowbase. They have got components, wireframes, illustrations, as well as boosters for Webflow. I personally use it as I love their designs. They're absolutely gorgeous. They have wireframes that you can use. So let's say for different header sections. And they also have components. So this will be actually like laid out and beautiful components that you can use on your website. I love their designs. So I use it quite a lot in a lot of my builds. And this is Relium. Relium has a little bit more functionality and they focus specifically on wireframes. The flow base, you can get some nice designs of components, but the Relium, it'll just be wireframes. So in Relium though, however, you can describe your website. So let's say a landing page or a car dealership. You can select how many pages. I just want one to five. And then you click generate sitemap. So Relium will actually use AI to come up with all of the different sections that you can use on the website that you describe. And we'll actually do that for multiple pages. But as you can see here, it came up with the layout. So we've got a navbar our hero section, feature section, testimonial section. And then when you go to the wireframes itself, it will actually start designing the website, which is pretty damn awesome. So you don't have to design from scratch. You can just take this wireframes and build from there. And let's say you don't like the section, you can actually just change it. So let's 
change it to a different header section, maybe this one instead. So you can change all of these components and it actually writes up the text as well. And when you're done with designing this wireframe, you can click on three dots here and then copy it to Webflow. But I've already done this like little design here using a components from Flowbase. So we'll just use this instead. So to import our project, we'll go back to Spline, we'll go to Overview and we'll copy the link from here. Then once we're back in Webflow, you we can just click plus here and search up for Spline and add that element onto the page but i already have the spline component here so i'm just gonna click here open settings and then i'm gonna enter the url here press enter and boom our 3d scene is loaded onto here now i'm gonna click here to preview it and it looks pretty awesome and when we scroll for the website, it also interacts with it. You can play around with the spline settings to get it to look exactly how you want. But this is what we achieved here in just a few minutes and it looks pretty damn cool. But let's adjust it slightly. I don't like how close the camera is. It actually makes the road cut off here. So I actually would like to have a little bit more black and I actually want to add a little bit more, a few more components here. So let's go back. So we're back in spline. I'm going to go back to my camera and I'm actually going to zoom out a bit. So like this, let's preview this. Now we got a bit of black black gradient here so it will actually look a bit smoother when we're scrolling through the web page and i'm also gonna adjust a little bit more settings in here so i'm gonna adjust the pan so you can actually scroll a little bit more maybe like 90 90 here as well and orbit limits i'm gonna set them a bit lower now we just click update viewer and we don't actually have to re-enter the link here and instead we can just reload the spline scene here by clicking this button and let's preview again as we can see in preview again looks pretty damn cool if i had a bit more time i would adjust more settings and maybe i'll like make it look like this on load but i think that's pretty damn cool as you can see if you scroll through here it all interacts with the scroll and i'm gonna add another component here just to show you so i want to add another component for like let's say a 3d engine that i'm gonna add below this car in the website so i'm gonna click new file here and then i just drag and drop this 3d engine that i found on the internet and i'm gonna make it a little bit bigger i'm gonna adjust where the light source comes from and i'm gonna actually adjust the the size of the frame i'm gonna remove this rectangle so that we don't have that shadow and then by clicking off i'm gonna adjust the size of the frame i'm gonna do custom size and i'm gonna make it 300 by 300 then i'm gonna resize the engine a bit so it looks a bit smaller and then i want to adjust this light source i want it to be a bit stronger so there's a bit more shadows and a bit more highlights and then boom i like the way this looks i'm gonna click export once again i'm gonna adjust the settings as well with this one i'm only gonna have orbit i'm gonna set orbit limits to be like 25 i'm gonna click update viewer then copy the link, head back to Webflow, and then change the link here. Click here, enter the link, and okay, we've got a slight problem here. We actually have a background. So to fix that, we're just gonna go to settings here and then hide the background color. Click update again, and now we can click on it again and refresh it. And boom, now it's here. I'm gonna add it to these other sections as well, and then I'm gonna click play to preview it. beautiful we've got our car here and then we've got the engines so the problem there is that i didn't have this on hover setting i'm just gonna on hover it's gonna orbit i'm gonna click update again and then boom now that we're back in the preview we've got our car and we've got our engines that actually follow our cursor pretty cool so that's it for the web flow now let me show you how dora works so Dora is another website builder and it's actually designed specifically for 3D design in mind and it makes it super, super easy. So now that we're in Dora, we can start building here as well. I used a little template to save time, but let me show you how to actually import the files into here. The process is very similar. Once again, we go to Spline, but instead of copying the link, we copy the code instead. Now back in Dora, we add an embed element. To do that, you just click plus here, choose embed and then enter it here. Once it's in here, you can go to the custom code here section on the right and import your code boom and that's our car done now i'm going to add the engine here similar as we did on the webflow website so this is the engine click export again and copy the code from here now that we're back in dora i'm going to click on the embed section i added here and then add the code as well and then boom we've got the engine let's preview we've got the car can also interact with it and then we've got the engine uh it's not quite in the right position, so let's adjust that. So I've adjusted it, and now it's in the correct position. I mean, it's not perfect, but it's good enough for the demonstration, right? So the question now is which builder do you go with? Do you go with Dora AI or do you go with Webflow? If you're looking to deliver websites professionally to your clients, then I would go with Webflow as they are a much more established builder and Dora is still in the beta stage. However, 
Dora does have a lot more 3D functionality and their keyframe builder is much more intuitive and easy to work with when you're making more complicated and much more nuanced animations. You can see the difference to the way they approach animations. It's night and day. Dora also supports native 3D files, so you can just drag and drop your 3D files in and work with those instead of relying on a third party tool like Spline. So if you're looking to deliver professional work, go with Webflow. If you're looking to do more complicated 3D stuff and you want to play around and be more creative, then I would go with Dora. And if you want to learn about the coolest no-code startup success stories, click the video on the screen now. I'll see you there.